Right. Thank you so much for joining us. It is Debate 4 and 1 on uh, Royal TV. My name as always is Eugene Anangwe. Thank you so much for making time. We totally apologize for starting uh, slightly late. Of course, when you have heavyweights in the room, you have to make space for them. Right. So let me bring on board our panelists on today's debate, which is media and patriotism. The key question we'll be asking ourselves are what are the qualities of a patriotic <coughs> journalist? And of course, we'll be looking at what other people have been calling uh, cheerleading and uh, whether it is always uh, there's need to keep asking questions on everything and all that. So let's bring in Gonzag Mugando. Thank you so much for joining us on Debate 4 and 1 on this conversation. Thank you, Eugene, for having me. Thank you. Bob Mugabe makes uh, uh, premiere on uh, the show. Thank you for joining us, Bob. My pleasure. Right. Uh, we want another rap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so and so he's here. Yes. Albert Rudatsimura, thank you for joining us. Yeah. And of course, Dr. Christopher Kayumba, thank you for joining us on the particular program today. Thank you for having me. Right. So this whole issue has been going on on our uh, social media platforms and, and, and the question that we've been looking at is what people always say in schools that uh, you know journalists are trained to uh, be neutral when they are doing what they are doing and, and and others say no a journalist can also have their opinion on something and so we're talking about the issue of patriotism when does a journalist draw the line and say you know here i will report about this regardless of what the interest of my country is on this particular issue. And so I want to start off, I'm trying to think, uh, every time I start with Albert, let me see if this time I can start less. Let me start with the one pointing fingers. Bob, what does a patriotic journalist look like in terms of your own definition of a patriotic journalist? Uh, I don't have a specific definition of a patriotic journalist mm. because <laughs> there, is, there can be a patriotic citizen, mm -hmm. but when you bring in the, the issue of a patriotic journalist, mm -hmm. uh, one would say one patriotism is about the feeling and attachment you have towards your country, but again, when you bring it in, a, it's a feeling. And then when you initially, it is it is an idea. It is uh, it is uh, a sense of belonging, and when you you bring that feeling in the profession. Mm -hmm. You know, journalism is an art, but also a science. So when you bring that feeling to it, it can be, it can be abused or misused or misinterpreted uh, based on the fact that, the, based on the fact of the nature of journalism itself. Mm -hmm. Yes, because uh, to me, uh, when you are a journalist and a responsible journalist, who is rational, you're, you're patriotic. Mm. Yes. Right. So uh, let's have the opening remarks before we come in there. Gonzag, he says, uh, you know, that this is a feeling that should not be mixed with your work as a journalist. When it is mixed in there, when you start saying, you know, I'm fast, my country fast, and all that, it affects how you operate. I, I'll use two analogies <coughs> or examples. There's a very famous quote by Winston Churchill when he said that, when he's out of his country, he makes it a rule to avoid attacking his government. Mm -hmm. But he, he, he makes up for the lost time when he goes home. Mm -hmm. So uh, he was implying that when, even if he has a problem with his own government, if he's in the opposition, but when he's out of the country, he avoids criticizing the government because it represents his country at that particular mm -hmm. time. But when he comes back, mm -hmm. he's very ready. Mm -hmm. If you are to apply to, 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 to journalism, I would think that same principle would should apply, mm -hmm. or to a degree should apply, because journalism also operates within a particular context. Because if you go to the ideas which we are taught in school, or we talked about that journalists are supposed to be neutral at all in those situations, uh, which is, it's an idea, but it's not practical. It doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, you have to understand that there are certain values, there are certain conditions where you live, where you, you work, and uh, if you are best to do your job, you also have to go al along with the the values that inform your country, but right. which is different mm -hmm. and should always be differentiated from uh, when it becomes necessary to, to differentiate the country's patriotic values from the, the particular government that is power at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Albert, in this con conversation, based on what uh, Bob says and what Gonzag says, especially when it comes to whether you should ever think of that thing behind your head in terms of you know your, your, your country first and all that, and he says you should never mix this feeling. Uh, does it make sense to you? Well, I, 
I don't think they they're very far from from each other in, in what they say actually. Mm -hmm. But then the good thing for me is that I didn't go to school, mm -hmm. so I don't have. <laughs> uh, I came to journalism by, I would say, the natural way of, because uh, I see it as another extension, according to me, not to scientific, not at all, mm -hmm. but more a thing of the brain. Uh, it's, a, it's part of the creative book, writing an article, taking a picture, producing a movie. nature of what you of what you how you use that brain to share something with an audience with with more people um, will imply the way you are mm -hmm. so if you are patriot obviously it will spill over in what you do mm -hmm. so I, I don't see it immediately as a, as a, as a, as a conflict mm -hmm. but it has the angle uh, of, of Winston Churchill in this in the thing in, in the in the in the, um, in the values that you say, when you, when you are patriot, that doesn't mean that you cannot criticize your own government. Mm -hmm. That was what Winston was doing when he was back. Mm -hmm. He was pulling all of his energy and, uh, and, his, and his heart and commitment to patri uh, patriotic stand by criticizing his own, uh, his own people, actually. Mm -hmm. So y you can be the same. You can be the same. Uh, uh, so a patriot journalist, there is no conflict of interest, according to me. <coughs> right. It can never be a conflict of interest at all. N not according to me. Yeah, uh, we'll <laughs> build up on that. <laughs> yeah. You sit or stand in these lecture halls, uh, you know, training journalists or speaking uh, journalistic uh, skills. Albert says, I didn't go to school, and so I don't have belong to the same school of thought on this issue. I don't have the Astrida <laughs> syndrome. <laughs> 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 when you're training these journalists, or when you're talking to them about this issue, where does the issue of patriotism, you know, lie in all this? And and does it bring in a conflict of interest? Because that's the key question in this issue. I think uh, the best way to understand whether there is a conflict of interest or not mm -hmm. uh, depends on a number of factors. So let me first make four broad points. Mm -hmm. Number one is the definition of patriotism. patriotism. Mm -hmm. He talked about uh, patriotism being a feeling, mm -hmm. a feeling that you belong <coughs> to a country X, and uh, by that very nature, you attach that city, uh, to that to that country, mm -hmm. and therefore it relates to citizenship. Mm -hmm. So the, the the theoretical definition of uh, patriotism, there is no disagreement. And as Albert says, everybody believes it is a feeling of attachment to a country. Mm -hmm. The problem comes with the practical day-to-day mm -hmm. -day meaning of that patriotism mm -hmm. when you relate it to journalism a journalist. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. If you look at how patriotism applied, patriotism has been defined, the, there is no disagree, there is a lot of disagreement. Because by the very nature of a journalist, a journalist is supposed not just to retell the day's events, what happened, but also to explain what does it mean. Mm -hmm. And most especially, holding power to account. Mm -hmm. But those who hold power, including me if I'm in the classroom, mm. I might have a different definition of, of, a, of a patriotic journalist. Mm -hmm. Secondly, therefore, mm. to me, the debate itself of a profession called journalism and patriotism is very problematic mm -hmm. and probably um, uh, divisive. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it supposes that by, if you say that they are patriotism and they are patriotic journalists, you are by implication saying they are non-patriotic mm -hmm. journalists. Mm -hmm. And therefore you are by dividing default. you are dividing professionals. Mm -hmm. Third, mm -hmm. if you look at applied journalism, mm -hmm. the practical sense of applied journalism, for example, here. Mm -hmm. In 1990, 92, 93, 94, a patriotic journalist was defined as a journalist who agreed with the Habyarimana regime and those who committed genocide. For example, Hassan Injezi was one of the Reformed. journalists that was uh, here celebrated, you know, hobnobbing with people who were in power mm -hmm. because he was in agreement and he was promoting the ideas of the people who defined what is patriotism 
and had the tools, the legal, they could make the law, but also they could apply it. Yeah. And that is very problematic mm -hmm. because today we know that Hassan Ngeze was no patriot. But what he did at the time was defined as patriotic. patriotic. If you look at, for example, in Uganda, there was a story whereby a journalist who uh, uh, reported the war in northern Uganda mm -hmm. and talked about the atrocities committed by the military in northern Uganda during the LRA war and um, seven regime, they, they showed a picture of a woman who was being shaved in, mm -hmm. in her private parts. And this journalist was taken to what? He was charged in court. So he was being unpatriotic by defeating. But is that unpatriotic? Uh, unpatriotic? And therefore, uh, to me, the definition of a patriotic journalist, <coughs> the classroom definition of a patriotic journalist is a journalist who holds power to account and puts out that which, which is done in the hiding. Mm -hmm. But that is not the definition. And the or, practical. Uh, that is why here, if you talk to people who know like Albert or this practicing journalist, it has also been pr problematic in post-genocide Rwanda to find a, a journalist who we can give a medal. I understand there was that debate, there was that inquiry. There is, a, there is a, a commission in charge of finding heroes. So they wanted a journalist, who car a current journalist who is a, a, a patriotic journalist. It is very <laughs> difficult to, 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 to pinpoint that person. Because, because the yardstick was what uh, at that time? What is the yardstick? What are they looking for? Someone for, who's for, always attacking? For example, we know that, that, for example, we know that a, patriotic, a patriotic citizen, yeah. as he, he, he talked about, yeah. is, if he's a soldier, is somebody who goes out and defeats the enemy of Rwanda. Mm -hmm. But who is a patriotic journalist? Mm -hmm. Is, 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 is it a person, for example, who would uh, oppose a, a policy on principle, report it objectively, or is it a journalist who would say, I agree with this policy 100% without question? And at the moment, we are doing a study l looking at um, comparing the Habyarimana regime, Kaivanda regime, and uh, during colonial times, and comparing editorial lines mm -hmm. of different uh, media houses, Chinyamateka, uh, Invaho, oh, uh, oh. Oh, oh, you know, ha, is, Pro. Uh, mm -hmm. is it there in the editorial lines at any point where they opposed a certain policy, mm -hmm. or suggested the policy that government does not want, and the government said you are doing a great job, we haven't seen that. Mm. So where are our patriotic journalists? Right. That's a question that we'll shoot to Gonzag here, hoping that he will be able to give us an, an answer to that. Uh, you know, uh, standing in there as someone who represents the Association of Rwandan Journalists, he has a question. Where are the patriotic journalists? And he says and insinuates that it's actually difficult to pinpoint a journalist who has, you know, criticized a policy, not just to criticize, but to also inform on how best <coughs> that policy should have been uh, you know, implemented or done. Do you agree with these thoughts? That's part of what makes a good journalist. I would think every journalist who is meeting the responsibilities is following the rules and regulations and the code that informs the, the profession and has the courage mm -hmm. to get out all the information that is necessary mm -hmm. to hold power to account. But also, beyond holding power to account, there is also the educational part of, of a journalist. Mm -hmm. I, would not, I would not underlook that because uh, Media plays a significant role in, in influencing how the, the public responds to certain policies. Mm -hmm. If it is in healthcare, people going to, to, to showing up to pay for their health insurance and so on, or sending children to school. A journalist, a journalist plays a role. It's not usually recognized so much, but I think it's very significant. So as long as the journalist is doing what they're supposed to do, doing it correctly, despite all the hurdles they face every day, I think they are meeting the responsibility as patriots. Whether they are recognized or not, that is very different. It's a different thing. Because I also remember the situation, because they brought it to us and we said we referred it back to them, the, the, the Minister of Culture, about awarding generous said now. How, how where do you start? Mm -hmm. well, the official wrote us, but we, we referred it back to them. So because it is it's not very clear cut. It's some, not something you say like somebody who saved maybe two hundred people during the genocide that this one clearly did something very hero heroic. But in every day, every day. I think most journalists are patriots. Yeah. Uh, let's take the gloves off because I'm kind of feeling like we are 
being so diplomatic and so nice with each other on this then, one. Then, then uh, can, I, can I hijack a little bit? Yes, because, hijack. Because, because I want us to, to, because to get I'm, I'm not get, conversation. Well, I, I'm, I, I don't know. You might have yes. started a, a debate before this show <laughs> that I'm yes. not aware yes. of. And I might have missed a step. Because yes. when I, 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 personally, when I don't see it, that there is a conflict. Yes. Because, uh, uh, unless you have a definition that mm -hmm. you didn't share with us mm -hmm. of, of mm -hmm. what what is understood by patriotic journalism. Because... Patriotism, at, at, at some point, it, it's, it's an individual uh, move. It's a choice that you do, mm -hmm. uh, which is a bit also like, like faith. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, it, that's, it, that's for your inner you. Yeah. Um, now, like Gonzague says, <laughs> by every time, if a journalist does his job correctly, like the policeman, if he does his job correctly, if, like the guy who is in the public servant who does his job correctly, or the, the guy who has his shop and, and does it correctly and respects the, 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 the public and all that, how are, aren't these guys not patriot? They mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. so, 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 but that thing that you want to label it patriotism, mm -hmm. I, I, that might be hijacked mm -hmm. by some people who are in need mm -hmm. Of having labels like patriotism, like in those days, yeah. because let, let's put it for 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 Hassan Yezo or, or, or all of these guys working for 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 the genocidaires. Mm. Let's let's say at least they were they were journalists for a cause, maybe the wrong cause, but they were journalists for a cause. Mm. So now to to label them patriotism is because that regime desperately needed to have patriots supporting it so they so so there that is where you we are hijacking the 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 the, the, the concept of, of patriotism yes. for me being professional is already being patriot yes you see because you see you, an you, angle. yes i i i i have been looking uh i stand to be corrected i've been looking in all books trying most of the books yeah about journalism and w since when you invited me i was trying to to relate uh, how patriotism and journalism can come together mm -hmm. i didn't find a book mm -hmm. defining who is a patriotic journalist mm -hmm. i think this is the word we have just borrowed to have this debate mm -hmm. and uh, therefore I, I i i i i say actually i have found many people arguing about patriotism and and when i bring that thing uh to this debate actually to your attention is that actually as uh, kayumba was uh, referring to when actually you're intro introducing this specific subject mm -hmm. as a debate mm -hmm. you're actually raising up the issue mm -hmm. and you are giving the advantage of the people he has been saying who they, who actually uh, who are so desperate wanting the journalist mm -hmm. to be patriotic. I remember one one of the uh, one of the media uh, who is a friend, one of the media CEO here, whom we talked during the Itorero, Itorero, this civic uh, thing. When I said no, I'm not going. Then he was say, Robert, you have lost your patriotism, and, <laughs> and because I did not go for Itorero, so I am to his definition, I'm not patriotic, and. I kept thinking, actually, when you bring this debate, actually you are also raising the issues that there, are, there is by default a possibility that we have journalists who are not patriotic. Mm -hmm. And to my understanding, that would be a false feeling because um, maybe we, why can't we even debate about patriotic, uh, patriotic businessmen, patriotic um, gender something uh, but you think, then you this, bring uh, it to journalism because yeah. it is very sensitive when yeah. you bring it to sensitive yeah. it has been portrayed in the oral history yeah. that actually most people have been trying to influence journalism yeah. to bring this patriotic feeling yeah. to influence it and to work according to the powers who, who most people are who I, I, I mean most governments yeah. see what Hitler was doing yeah. with the let's, let's with move away from Hitler, let's move away from the yes. books let's go practical yes. mm -hmm. Rwanda specifically because the criticism that has been going on is that we have cheerleading kind of journalists mm -hmm. around here as opposed to journalists who ask the tough questions for example we have the Kigali Convention Center and you have a journalist spending less I mean let's say 15 minutes on air talking of how pretty mm -hmm. the Kigali Convention <laughs> Center is, 
as opposed to that is fine it's you, you're passing out information as opposed to asking or informing now okay fine there's money that was spent in this how will it affect you as a taxpayer when it comes to your day-to-day -day livelihood now secondly if you are you know my country first mm -hmm. and then anything else later what if you are a correspondent for example of an international media house and you have to report on something that is not so positive about your country would you openly would you easily just comfortably give the full account of that particular situation without conflict of interest this is the question we're asking i would be i would love to be the first person yes. to come in when it comes to those two questions mm -hmm. uh, i think and i believe that uh, I remember w the first time I was asking one official about the convention center. He was like, Robert, why are you, where are you going with those stories? What, can't you see how others are behaving? Why are you always you know, calling me all these names? But I remember when I asked the first question about that minister, I was like, OK, there was Eurobond invested to do this. But again, you are telling me now that you, we have other stakeholders actually who are shareholders mm -hmm. in the convention center how does that come he says no uh we shall call for a press conference make sure that you are there and uh, by the way these questions are none of your concern and and but let me tell you this i believe that every journalist who is using who are using their resources who are taking their time to to ask tough questions even to report about the, uh, the negative report about Rwanda. They are still patriotic, as long as they are not framing the government, like they are not the one coming up with this report. Mm. For instance, I wouldn't <coughs> mind if I report about uh, our troops, how they are doing, maybe if they are, they are doing bad in Central Africa, I would be okay to report about that. And you know why? I want these things to be dealt with and so that our troops can be safe or they can do what they are supposed to do in peacekeeping. So reporting either negative or positive, it shouldn't be portrayed in the sense of patriotism because it is in the clear sense of and the line of duty of any journalist who is supposed to ask questions. Mm -hmm. We don't hold the guns. Mm -hmm. The guns we have is asking questions. Mm. If you don't ask questions, and these questions, we don't ask them for ourselves. We ask tough questions <laughs> for the interest of the people. Mm. So if you ask, if you investigate, if you bring these hidden issues, this corruption, then to me and to a neurological journalist, is a patriot. But uh, and now let me say three quick things. First, we have to understand that um, journalism is a very special profession. Mm. That is why we have a whole chapter in the Universal Education of Human Rights, chapter 19, defending and talking about this profession. Mm. It, is, it is through journalism, it is through the media uh, that um, freedom of expression can be actualized on a larger scale. Mm. So it has a special, uh, a special role in society. But that special role, the way it is understood by those in power, by the citizen for whom we report, and the journalists is very different. And this causes a problem. That is why this concept of patriotism can be very problematic. Mm. For example, if I am, the, let us say he's the minister of, uh, say, what Minister happened? X, mm. and he goes, he goes to negotiate uh, uh, weapons for, on Rwanda's behalf. But in between, he buys junk, planes, mm. he buys junk uh, arms because he has taken he has taken a ten percent bribe mm. and you report that by definition you would be described as unpatriotic. Mm. Why? Because you they would say you are exposing you, you are talking about military stuff and arms and stuff. But that is good journalism at its best because you are saving the country uh, of money, you are exposing wrongdoing, abuse of office, corruption. But that cannot be uh, uh, taken in by everyone. Secondly, 
if you look, if you want to really understand uh, how that can be problematic, read, read an article by, it's called uh, David Watson. He's talking about the media manipulation and how the idea of patriotism was manipulated and used as a tool of propaganda mm. to start a war in Iraq, in Afghanistan, mm. even this war on terrorism. If, if you question the narrative, for example, if you question today the narrative of terrorism and how it is uh, fought and where it comes from and how it can be stopped, the contrary view is not always on the mainstream media. Why? Because part of the mainstream media in the U.S., in the West, is partly driven by that fear of they will say, I am unpatriotic. And also this feeds into what Gonza was talking. The idea of the national media and the idea of the international media. Mm -hmm. Most of these developed countries, internally, they have settled certain questions. For example, that expression you cannot be questioned. That uh, freedom of the media is OK. So when they are debating internal domestic policy, they are really patriots. They are questioning their leaders. They are exposing wrongdoing. When they go out to fight the enemy, mm -hmm everybody is putting on a flag. Mm -hmm. But in the context, context to, that is why even historically, if you look at World War One, World War Two, how they were fought, patriotism was used as a tool of propaganda. If you look at BBC, there is BBC mm -hmm. World Service mm -hmm. and BBC, the local radio. The local radio reports from BBC World Service. World Service was started originally to project the power of Great Britain, how wonderful the Queen is, mm -hmm. And any, the, you could never hear anything that contradicts that narrative. Mm. And they were talking about Soviet Union as the evil empire. And that's why you have uh, in, in the whole of uh, uh, Western Europe, uh, Eastern Europe, BBC played a great role in the defeat, not just in World War One, uh, World War Two, but also in, a def in the defeat of. A communist Russia. Because the journalists put on a flag. They, even, they raised today, a flag. Uh, even today, the way the media works in the West, yeah. it is, it works on the, of course, they hide uh, this, even this idea of a neutral media. Mm -hmm. The media is not a, prof a professional <laughs> media, the, a professional media. Media organizations are not started by people who have no interest. Mm -hmm. Professional, stable, Sustainable media houses are started by people who believe in certain ideals. And it is these ideals, that's why we have even a, what they call editorial policies. Mm -hmm. some, some media houses here, they, when you say, what is your editorial policy? They say, may I report environment. Mm -hmm. That is not an editorial line. Mm -hmm. That is a, a specialization. Mm -hmm. Editorial line means there are certain things you believe in and certain things you don't believe in. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if, if, you, if <coughs> somebody, a politician, promotes or an individual promotes certain ideas that you don't believe in, you oppose them and you write them negatively. If, for example, you believe in a free market and you get somebody who comes saying that they want government to get involved in business, you oppose that. So this thing called the neutral journalism. It never exists. It doesn't exist. It, it, it exists only when you're talking about day-to-day -day events, what, has, what we call hard news. Mm -hmm. But in the way we are debating here and what you promote, mm -hmm. it doesn't exist. Right. Uh, Albert, specifically on, on, on what's going on right now, for example, in Burundi, you, you, you tweet a lot, you speak a lot, and, and some people uh, kind of feel like you are tweeting and, and, and sending tweets, you know, uh, you know with, with, with the backing of, of your country. Like you know, because there've been those. I guess the, I guess the guys of of, of Burundi, the, the one that are criticized. Yes, eventually. Yes. So so at the end of the day, somebody like Nyamitka <laughs> believes that you are sent by the government. Yes. Here. So this is what I'm trying to ask here, because as a journalist, if you were to report about the kind of conflicts between your country versus another country, are you supposed to stand? Neutral. on the side or be neutral and just report as it is this is this is the question we're talking about here when you when you ask about media and patriotism there is something that the <coughs> that he, he started with and that i'm gonna <coughs> reach where where you you you, you propose to go <coughs> we, we we need to remember like also uh, one of the causes of the 
downfall of or, or the defeat of the United States of America in Vietnam was media. Mm -hmm. And especially also American media, international, but also when American media got in, the United States discovered the, 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 the horror for which some Americans had been even dragged into to be to be real patriot and to support their boys in, in Vietnam. Yeah. So there that, that, that is, I would say, hijacking the, 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 the concept of, of patriotism mm -hmm. because the, the, the real guys did a good job to say we are not doing what, what, the, what our politicians are saying that we are doing there. Mm -hmm. So it was very patriotic, according to me, mm -hmm. from the, the, these journalists to mm -hmm. stand up against it. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing uh, that makes me that makes you think or, or raise a question: uh, Do you always have to report what what you eventually witness? Mm -hmm. That is that is that becomes a, a personal uh, dilemma, I would say. That is for an individual to to, to, to crack, mm -hmm. but that individual will be influenced by his environment also because there is an editorial line of uh, uh, that he, he he will follow. That is the, theor the theory now. Personally, I've been, I've been reporting ever since 94. That is when I, I got back. Mm -hmm. And I've been reporting in Congo when it was still Zaire, becoming Congo. I followed uh, Laura Kabila. The different uh, crisis in, in, in Eastern uh, Congo. Now there is Burundi. I, and, and the reason why, why I personally went into that is that I believe in a cause. Mm -hmm. I do it with a cause. Mm -hmm. I'm, I have nothing uh, again uh, against the regime in Burundi if, if everything was fine. Mm -hmm. But when, when people are dying, when people are being tortured, abducted, and all that, and it's obvious, it's there, then I say, w w why? And if I have a voice, why? And if I get the information, because with the time, of course, I created this brand, the fact that people feed you also with information. Mm -hmm. And when you're there, now, would I do the same thing if it was Rwanda? Mm -hmm. I, I believe so. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Because th this is also how I got back in Rwanda. I left here in 61 or 62, something like that, mm -hmm. and got back in 94 because of all of this. Mm -hmm. So this whole quest keeps me, ke keeps me driving all of the time. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have no, no, I'm not sent by any government. This is a personal choice that I made. And so my doing journalism, it's about that. I believe in Pan-African, uh, Pan-Africanism. That was that that has been my whole education, my whole backdrop. So wherever it happens, and I'm around, mm -hmm. I will report about right. that. Uh, Bob, in your in, if you, in your own opinion, uh, is is this how we should be doing it? Like as a journalist, do you think when reporting on conflict between your own country? As a patriot, you know, as a person who loves Ukundi are you supposed to be taking any side, or uh, is, is he supposed to be asking? But I was, I'm not taking sides. <laughs> as in, I, I don't, as in, I don't know. I'm <laughs> not here to judge, yes. but the fact is, um, he said it when what American media did mm -hmm. during the Vietnam War mm -hmm. was patriotic. Mm -hmm. And actually, it wasn't just the media trying to to say what the troops, what the US troops were doing in Vietnam and everything. Actually, it was an impression of the people, the Americans. They felt, no, this war is not a good idea. And our troops are not exactly doing what our politicians are saying. And actually, from that, it is different from what American media did during the invasion of Iraq, because the American troops went there. But what I'm asking, for the nukes, moving away from which you are not there. Well, I'm talking about yes. Albert's approach. But What's Albert's, your on that Albert's approach. Albert's of, approach. Of things, yes. uh, if if anybody who started criticizing Nkurunziza was me, mm. when when he met uh, President Kagame in, somewhere in Utare, I don't know. He was consulting. I don't know what I was. By then, the refugees were already in Rwanda, the Burundi refugees, and Nkurunziza was President Nkurunziza was here. And he did not even mind trying actually to take an initiative to talk to these refugees and give them hope that it is, we are going to take care of this conflict and you are going to come back to your house. And um, by the way, not this. By that time, we were still commemorating genocide. He did not even issue a, a, any statement when he came here. Two, I criticized his um, 
that's a small thing about his wardrobe kind of something <laughs> his wardrobe his but the, the issue the, the issue socks. his socks <laughs> suit and everything which was i don't know it was to me it was portraying conflict already it was there it was there conflict was there you could see <laughs> president was a conflict was already in his house physically you would see, physically, you would see the the symptoms yeah. But again, going to um, and someone would say you would do that because he's not your president. No, uh, not not uh, because on I other side, yes. because would you, you still do the same. Yes, because I I would do the same, but I know the consequences here. Hmm. I know the consequences. What are the consequences? For, for instance, the consequences is we have more than fourteen journalists mm -hmm. who are in, in exile as we speak, mm -hmm. and some have were taken, mm -hmm. were driven from from Kigali. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the journalists was. I don't. Fra was taken mm. to Tanzania and he was told, from today, your country is Tanzania. Mm. Robert Mukombos cannot, he was given non person and grata here mm. at, 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 by, with immigration. He's a Rwandese. Mm. He's now in Australia. Because he, he, he asked questions. Yes, he, he worked for the New Times. Then he worked for the Daily Monitor. So this guy, actually, he roared me to the New Times when he was sharing the byline with uh, another journalist called the Felix Chimeng. There were good reports to me, they, uh, my, they roared me to leave the radio and come to the print. So by then he, uh, he was having issues based on his critical reporting. And actually what he was saying later became to be true. But actually, he, no, <laughs> he, he cannot even come back because in his passport he is given non personal card. He can't come back. As an advocacy group, uh, because at the end of the day, if he is claiming this. Uh, <coughs> no, I'm not, com I'm not claiming. You These are the things in record. This is factual. For this you. is factual. It's not for me, yes. for everybody who would want to verify this. Fortunately, we haven't had a case in the last six years since those times, so we could say there is some improvement. Or maybe the journalists are no longer doing what they they are supposed that, to do. Uh, uh, no, what others were doing at, at the other at, the, at that time. Uh, the point is, we don't advise journalists to ignore the context within which they work because they have to to be there to do their work. Uh, secondly, so what is that context? Yes. <laughs> That's a great. Yeah, the question. context of the country we, we are we are in. If you take the position, you declare yourself the opposition, and you become an, a politician more than a journalist. Uh, definitely, you'll be approached by those who oppose, you oppose, they also oppose you in, in, in many ways. That's why even uh, trying at least to be impartial on certain issues, as he said on uh, the hard news, which is very important. But we cannot ignore that media is, is very broad. In a country like Rwanda or in many uh, places where the internet plays given control, there's diversity. So it, it, it is, it's not a problem that one genius has taken a position on this issue mm -hmm. rather than taking the other. Mm -hmm. It encourages the debate mm -hmm. and the uh, exchange of, of, of ideas. Mm -hmm. So that should be not be a, a big big problem. Mm -hmm. uh, even appearing as an as an activist, Dr. Gumba talked about that people have interest. Mm -hmm. Media houses have interest mm -hmm. that you cannot ignore. Uh, if you study the, the, the modern media in the 1930s and during the, war, the Second World War, the intelligence services of various countries played a significant role in promoting media. Mm -hmm. In some countries, they still do. Even here, we have some media houses owned by intelligence services. So it is not a, a surprise that they have positions on, on certain issues. And the only solution is the diversity. Other people's different views also accessing uh, media, yeah. being able to the, put out their messages. Is, but, but there is something here, yeah. just to be clear. Yeah. My, my reporting on, on Burundi is not about patriotism. Yeah. Yeah. It's about witnessing a, a crisis. Yeah. So, and, 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 and most, most media have left. Mm -hmm. So there's very few voices, in fact. Uh, so so that, that is the context. Mm -hmm. Now, coming back to Rwanda, because you were like uh, saying that the uh, our journey is a bit too soft and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they should not, because if you have an environment that, that is, in fact, uh, trying to, to promote uh, a zero tolerance on, on corruption, imagine the avenues that you have. Mm -hmm. Is there a problem with the convention center? Well, dig it up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, uh, if this system wants to to to, to cut uh, 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 corruption, it, it it has it needs information. Yeah. But his argument is that the environment doesn't allow for that. He says there's also context. You've been there from 1994 and, uh, and all through up to now. Is this true? Is this really true? Based on there, the experience, there is there is a. a 
a serious uh, evolution also uh, of perception mm -hmm. of, of what the media does. It is also an evolution because they are, the, the players are, uh, are changing also. The, the, the people who were, the small group of, of people that were called journalists in 94 yeah. uh, is now much bigger. There are more media, there are more, there, 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 there is so much more into, into about reporting than, than, than a conflictual uh, uh, position. Mm -hmm. Because of that, the, the industry gets another level of maturity also mm -hmm. and, and start to also impose their the, uh, uh, own uh, point of view. But I, I still believe that there is much more room of improvement, but that would come by the actors themselves, by the people who are the, the real guys, the, 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 the players. I mean, they have to lift up the, 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 the level of, of the debate mm -hmm. and, and, and what they throw to the, to the audience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Eugene, yeah. Eugene, I'm, I'm sorry. Mm. Before you bring Doctor in yeah. and to talk about certain issues, yeah. uh, sometimes when somebody says, "Yeah, there is some improvement, some improvements," in 1993, I stand to be corrected. Njeze Hassan published ten, com ten Hutu commandments. Mm -hmm. Last last two months, two media organs here published a list of of enemies of the state mm -hmm. now i don't know really? yes i oh. the the list of containing the names of the enemies of the state and to me that's that's like I don't have words for that. But, 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 but you know, you have also... To Are you comparing the two? This. I am trying actually to say uh, that yes. every time yeah. there, are, there, is, there is a government mm -hmm. encouraging journalists, some of specific journalists, and label them patriotic, mm -hmm. and these journalists will always go as far as ignoring the basic principles of journalism, mm -hmm. including even mm -hmm. endangering people's lives. Let's be so practical. Those two, those yeah. two media were, 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 were pushed by the government here to publish. I am press. not saying that yeah. they are pushed by this, yeah. but what I was, what I can tell you right now, yeah. is that the names of the of the of the the bylines of the journalist of these two media companies. If I give you assignment right now to go and find these journalists in this country, I bet I will give you $200. You can't find them. So what, do you, what are you insinuating? I am insinuating that actually, when you go at the point of trying to justify patriotism and non-patriotism and trying to do this, it is always defined by the people in power, who is a patriot and who is not. And these people in power, remember that. That's why it is very complicated to get a hero in the media of Rwanda, because these guys and everybody cannot agree on. Hmm? Does so, this make sense? <laughs> okay, Umba, let me bring you in. Probably two points. You yeah. know, uh, Alba talked about um, the cause yeah. he's driven by the cause yeah. so I, I think it is better to interrogate that more so mm -hmm. what is the cause of a journalist yeah. Yeah. so the the cause of a journalist of course the theoretical cause the one you said we teach in school mm -hmm. that you have to be objective that you serve the truth and be the voice of the voiceless yes be the voice of the voiceless question power hold them to account mm -hmm. That is the standard mm -hmm. cause mm -hmm. of a journalist. Mm -hmm. Applying that, we bring in context. My friend uh, Mugano talks about context, <laughs> the importance of context. Mm -hmm. How is it easy to apply that standard of a journalist in real life? Mm -hmm. And finally, if you look at the media, since the beginning of modern media, even modern uh, civilization mm -hmm. there has never been any government anywhere that is very happy of being criticized there has never been people in any government that will send you a check of 200 US dollars because you have exposed their wrongdoing mm -hmm. all governments because they are made of individuals and individuals because we like putting our foot uh, our best foot forward we, we always fight for that the difference comes with how we deal with dissent, 
with how we deal with people who disagree with us, with how we deal with uh, stories we don't like. If you are talking about Burundi, if you look at the media in Burundi, almost 90% of independent media in Burundi was destroyed. Media houses were literally burned. Almost 90% of independent journalists in Burundi mm. are now in exile. But what is their crime? Their crime was because they were questioning Muzi that they were saying, you were saying you have served only one term. By our accounting, by our accounting, <laughs> you have served two terms, <laughs> 10 years. Each term is five years. <laughs> the constitution says it is only two terms. The Arusha Accord say two terms. So if you, are, if you are going against the law, if you are going against the constitution, we think you are wrong. And by Muzis and people who support him, that is unpatriotic. How can you question a head of state, the father of a nation? So questioning uh, is what determines uh -huh. whether you will be labeled patriotic uh -huh. or not. If, for example, um, you have a law, this law is, laws are not put there to be changed when a person just feels that this law no longer serves me. So if a journalist questions that, if I am the one and this, this, uh, this clause, this law is going to serve me, I won't like you. Mm. So I will hold you to account. And of course, the problem in certain contexts, like here, for any journalist, for any media house to withstand that pressure, to stand against to people who have power, political power and economic power, you also need two things. You need to be feeding yourself. If you are not able to feed yourself, if a media house is not able to pay journalists like you and survive for a certain period of time, and it is dependent on those individuals who want this form of power, you will, of course, praise me. You will praise those who give you bread. Uh, bread. So this also has something to do with um, the economic social structure in, under which you operate. That is why the media here is, media is not homogeneous. That is why the media here is not the same as in, in Kenya the, or in Uganda. The media in Kenya is largely driven by the economic motive, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So nation can survive whether those in power want or they don't want. Mm -hmm. So it can pay but how that, many media houses here can survive regardless. Yeah, but doctor, you need also... But there is also, there is also the colonial element. If you look at media houses Actually, the, in the, countries... Actually, they survive regardless because there is no revenue. If, if you... If you, if, <laughs> if you this was part of the debate last time. Uh -huh. If you under the, 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 the so colonial... So what Albert is saying is that point doesn't actually hold water. The, the thing is, the thing is, uh, the way they survive yeah. here, mm -hmm. the way media houses is survive... Is it because they, they praise the government a lot so the government feeds them? Is partly, what you're partly, no, partly. because but they are patriotic. But, 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 but if Every you, morning they go to the, do their job despite there is no revenue. Yes, the thing is, but the thing is, like he said... <laughs> it, Actually, they deserve a if you look at uh, If you look at the owners of media houses mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. private media houses, owners, mm -hmm. Yes. Just they, ha they have money. They have money to buy food, yeah. yes, and shoes, and maybe. Be honest, car. they have no money. But but uh, but no, they cannot. They, they cannot. Uh, <laughs> they, they are not media houses driven by the profit motive, whereby you will be having uh, returns every 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 year, and you are really? you go you go very happily to revenue. So there is no problem. Mm. You pay all your journalists. Mm. Where do, you get the Re Rio salaries, Where do you get the revenue They have from? money, like he said, to, sur to we have survive. A media owner where, here. Where, where, where do you? Yes, yes. So, so I, I agree with him, but not when he's putting it in our context, because mm -hmm. our context is not uh, the, the, the usual uh, academic school teaching context. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, in, 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 in Kenya, uh, Media or Uganda. Can, no, or Uganda, they can survive because of what? Because there is, they are part of a private sector, and there you have a much larger private sector. Mm -hmm. So they can mm -hmm. tap into that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here, there is absolutely no private sector that, that understands that they, if, if, if spending in media will have a return on their, on their revenues. They don't. Uh, they, and they, Albert, you agree that even advertisers here, 
some advertisers advertise and they, they because, no they, because they, they, they feel sorry for you. They, <laughs> yes. they, don't, they don't advertise right. because, because, they, yes. because they have, yeah, yeah, they yeah. have, uh, the, they, 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 they don't, have, the, the, they most don't advertise they think they are because they are serving their interests. Yeah. In other uh, larger economies, mm. Where you have a bigger, uh, you have a bigger private sector. You have, you have bigger businesses. <laughs> they know businesses advertise because it is in their interest. Okay, because exactly, exactly. they spend on you and you bring them money. Exactly. Here, they you know, they I even worked in the media. We used to go to how many companies do we have? We used to go to companies and they would say um, <laughs> uh, they first ask questions and. Uh, if, if they do if they don't like you they will not give you money, give so, money. There no <laughs> that's another that's another so there is no that's another so 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 how can so, 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 yes. how can you be a patriotic journalist yes. the so, one we talked about so, so, that but, but, but that let, me, let me let me extend what you were saying so yeah. so here <laughs> you don't survive because you open or, or, or you close yeah. your, 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 your mouth. So you have to... So, so that's not the to, point. To play by because you, you try to just to survive because... Mm. Because the private Actually sector doesn't spend. The, the private yeah. sector doesn't spend. But neither does the, does the government. Mm. Government doesn't spend also. I mean, they, 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 they don't communicate. So literally, therefore, so, so the media, the media has issues. The issue, wait, wait, the wait, issue wait, wait, is you simple. Mind, just the issue is simple. Mind, has because we, 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 yes, yes. Yes. We, we, the, the point was about patriotism. So it's not <laughs> on an economical base that they can, that they can peep, uh, hold them to that patriotic act the way they want. So here the environment is, is very different. Now. The other difference with a country like Kenya is that there is a political activity all of the time. Mm. So reporters have enough content. content. Mm. They, 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 it's just about the choice. Mm. Because there is always a minister at this and <laughs> that doing something, uh, or, or even the president, whatever. So there is enough content uh, generation. Mm. But here, that is the problem. I mean, the, 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 whatever the government is doing is, 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 is a completely different context and m means that you need to adapt now to see to eventually, if you want to be part of that, of, of, of reporting about that, to understand what is the logic of the government, how do they move there, why, why do we move from a Serena uh, into a, a now a, a convention center, how did we get the, a Nakajira Park and with lines and tomorrow rhinos and things so like that. So that is what but because defines there the is line something, there the is something, take. there is something that yeah. is there. So, but there is uh, uh, so much room in which we don't really invest. Uh, Albert, actually, my contention is this. My, issue, yeah, 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 let's my contention is yes, this, yes. that you cannot be a patriotic citizen, I mean a patriotic journalist, mm. on an empty stomach. Mm. So it, 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 it you, plays you, how you... Because mean. a patriotic journalist, yeah. a real patriotic journalist, is somebody who holds power to account. Mm -hmm. Is somebody who reports the truth. Mm -hmm. Is some. It is not somebody. Regardless of whether who, who, he's, he's sponsoring my show does, or not. Who does PR yeah. in the name of journalism? I, I, I really you have see, a problem see, with this, you this see, thing. Yeah, that issue. The debate why, is now because of the topic. No, 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 Bob. Let's Bob, you yes. got the floor for for a while. So no, but the question is, why would I be? Why would I want to be labeled a patriotic journalist? Mm -hmm. For me, this patriotism, like I say, if it's my cause, it's my personal cause. That is nothing that I have to expose in public or whatever mm -hmm. for what I do. I really would, the same thing, I don't want to be labeled a Christian uh, journalist. I don't want to be a Muslim journalist. Mm -hmm. I just want to be a, a journalist. Mm -hmm. I really don't want to be, uh, and if I do a patriotic act, that is my choice. Yeah. But I think what he's trying to insinuate here is that uh, because Actually there's that desperation for, 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 for having this kind of sponsorship or these revenues, then you cannot be able to go out of your way to expose uh, you know, whoever is actually sponsoring because you might not survive. This is what he's trying to say. In any case. It, it, it locks the minds of the journalists. And, and, and if that particular media house, I mean, not media mm -hmm. house, that sponsor was to go contrary to, to societal norms, mm -hmm. then you are not able to expose them because True. you are being fed by that finger and and, and this is true. And, and the definition yeah. of, a, of a patriotic journalist in yeah. this sense yeah. is a good journalist yeah. a journalist mm -hmm. who reports as it is yeah. a journalist who investigates mm -hmm. and reports the truth mm -hmm. not somebody who gets the truth and sits on it yeah. and says all of us we are angels 
Mm. The, the thing you are telling us that journalists were talking about everything is really great. Yeah. Actually, uh, uh, Anangwe, yeah. the fact is you can be a patriotic journalist even when you had no lunch. Mm. I insist. You can or you can't? You can. You can. You can. Because so you disagree because with what he says. patriotism is a feeling. Mm. It is not whether you ate or whether you did not eat. Mm. But he talked about context. Mm. You are also trying to talk about context. Let me bring it in this, how I understand the context here. You cannot, maybe, I don't know, I start to be corrected, in a country where civil society itself is not active. But you agree, you agree you're also part of it as a job? Yes. So you mean, yes, 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 yes. Two, where private sector is highly controlled, the economy is in the hands of government, where uh, uh, political space is limited, we don't have politicians who disagree, who, who we say that actually, he said it in Kenya, there is a political activity, there is uh, some people, there is, there is no political competition. There is none, totally none. In your opinion. In my opinion. Mm. So how do you expect the media to survive? First of all, what they will do is, and again, Government narrative is highly controlled. So, what the media companies did before 1994, in 97, 98, the best way to survive was trying to, to walk into the official narrative. Whereby, once the, the designers of a narrative found out that actually we have got the whole media towing our narrative, so there is no reason again <coughs> to advertise with them. We have them. We got to them. We don't need to do anything. That's all. Go I don't agree. Uh, Albert, totally Albert doesn't, doesn't but, but you see, buy that. Totally not. Uh, why, 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 why it, it, as we close. some of yes. what he says is, is factual. He's not giving the right cause. Because it does not stop you from, uh, actually it's part of the media mm. to create that political activity mm. that, that they can continue, continuously report on. Because if, if you, you know something, or you don't promote political competition, it's not in the interest of those who are about to promote the opposition or competition. Mm -hmm. So we also have to look at our role as media if we're doing a role. Yeah. If, and if it is actually desirable that we have the same situation as in Kenya. Yeah. It has to be context. Uh, context. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but how would this thing of context? context exactly we, have have a error in. we are also actors. Yeah. We are yeah. not supposed to sit on the fence and say, yeah. oh, we're waiting but, for but, 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 yes, yes, but, but, yes, Anangwe, think about the owners of the media in Rwanda. Most of them, they are open. I am the CEO of a media company. Yeah. But how did I get here? Yeah. Why don't we have serious investors in the media here? So I it is not the issue yeah. of professional me mm, doing people, as the who doctor who was saying. The, the who, the so, so you are yes, saying we are not a serious investor. No, no. We, let me tell you, <laughs> we are not serious investors because serious investors cannot risk this situation. Mm. So it is the journalists who are driven by passion and driven by the cause, as he said, who are in this industry. Yeah. The serious, so business, serious, serious business, the serious no, business, serious business, who are yeah, investing in serious, who are investing in serious yes, money. Really, okay, so, so f first of all, I believe that he gives some facts, but he, don't, he doesn't give the, 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 the totality of it. Because, first of all, the economy is not in, 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 in hand of the government. Mm -hmm. the, the economy is being, driven by the, by the government because they have a, uh, they have a policy of how they want to move a country mm. from this level of 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 of, of, of development yeah. to another one yeah. and there a private sector that was so small is being in fact uh, uh, supported by the government yeah. so it gives you room enough as mm. a as a journalist to dig into that to see if the things things are doing uh, uh, according to this vision. Yeah. So there is room. There is indeed no op op uh, uh, competi competitive uh, uh, politics. Mm. So, but there is still room to, to go into there. To so, 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 and, but indeed, if you, don't, if you can't generate uh, quality revenues in, in, that, in that sector, it's diff difficult to, 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 to get <laughs> quality salaries mm. for quality people. people yeah. So that is where mm -hmm. I, I join him to mm -hmm. say, 
if you don't have guys that really put the, uh, enough uh, enough uh, capital into that, you cannot also develop the, the human capital. Mm -hmm. I mean, it will be it will go at at our True. pace actually. Back and so, forth. but but there is th there is definitely room for 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 doing. Uh, investigative journalism, uh, uh, analysis, whatever, opinions and, and all. The there is. There. The space mm -hmm. is there. So you two, three quick points. Yeah. First of all, it is, it is true, you know. If you look at the history of Rwanda, if you look at the, eco the economy of Rwanda, it, was, it used to be very small. At one, at one point, nine, around two, two, uh, 2008, a one former CEO of Brailwa used to tell us that whenever any CEO of Brailwa got annoyed, he yeah. could get a minister of finance sacked mm. because it was the only company <laughs> during the Javier Mana regime paying taxes mm. you know so the economy was small now it is growing because of that push from the government mm. so that is a good thing that we have now more than uh, more than one company that mm. is big mm. secondly I think we should do like he said we should do not we should desist from talking about patriotic journalists mm -hmm. we should talk about good professional independent journalism right. yeah. that is that is what what, what, what is the, what makes sense otherwise this patriotic journalism is going to divide people and mm. uh, and, and to understand that and finally this mm. brings my mm. last point Maybe I, I should advise him you should read a book called um, manufacturing consent by Naomi Chomsky and another mm. guy called uh, Edward uh, Harman yeah. you know they talk they talk about uh, how consent even the one you are talking about uh, everybody is, is agreeing even in the developed countries, how that was done using the media, and therefore, yeah. while theoretically we say media serves the ordinary person so that they get to know broadly, anywhere, media serves those who are powerful. This is, this, this, this is factual. Yes, it is factual. <laughs> <laughs> I oppose that. He opposes that. Of serious, course, he opposes that is that. where we actually bring down the curtains <laughs> to the show. Of course, the conversation usually ends here on air, but of course, it has to go on. I'm sure it will go on in one way or another. And ladies and gentlemen, we are actually trending once again. And thank you so much. Yeah, I didn't have that time to really go through all your tweets, but very quickly, I've got Tete TK who says, uh, Relentless English Western football on radio in Rwanda, Africa is a new form of uh obscuritism mental slavery and alienation i don't really understand where that came from but he says that young people in rwanda assume this with no evidence is the effect of uh ponoptism hey gatete where are you coming from with all this kind of english <laughs> Of Get that. rid of TK, right? Yes. Uh, we have Willie say survival that uh, Kayumba talks of, which pushes journalists to praise bad governments is back, uh, or rather is lack of uh, patriotism. Patriotism includes sacrifice, and this is what he was saying. Whether I sleep hungry or I don't get anything, I should still be able to report and speak out. Uh, Robert says, I think journalists need to be sensitive with how they report. Report with wisdom. This is the advice he says. Um, the other one here, Wilson says, last time Mr. President, let me just go back to that, Mr. President pointed uh, on VUP news, um, became news everywhere. Where are the reports now? Uh, this is what he's asking. So journalists seem to have gone uh, back to bed or we seem to have gone to back. Hungry. Uh, hungry. Uh, Reggie says, the moment you censor yourself because you know the consequences of the environment in which you work mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, take place, uh, this is the context <laughs> which uh, he was saying. Um, in this context. There's so much here. You can talk of patriotism in media when media is ever controlled or censored by a government and used as a tool for propaganda. I have so many of them. Thank you so much, Emma. You also watching and many others who have been watching. Let's keep this conversation going and all your thoughts coming. Hashtag is debate 4 and one We'll see you again and next time. Same place. And of course, my name as always is Eugene Anangwe. Goodbye.